Good morning, everybody. I tell you, it is a hard act to follow when you're speaking after a man that has the forethought to bring roses on Valentine's Day. That is not a, an easy act to follow. I really appreciate working with you, Michael, and, and, and thanks for all of your uh, remarks. We uh, truly have a, a great leadership team uh, and, and a, a, just a good, uh, good working relationship, uh, both with leadership, our executive board, our big uh, board of directors. Um, it, it's funny, uh, oftentimes our, our meetings are uh, around the Super Bowl, around Valentine's Day, and I have to tell a, a little story on myself. Uh, one of the, the first meetings uh, that uh, I went to for NACD when I first came on staff uh, was in Reno, Nevada uh, in uh, 2007, I believe it was. And uh, that meeting happened to, to coincide around Valentine's Day. And several, several of us on staff decided, you know, we're right here in Reno, Tahoe is just up the mountain, and wouldn't it be great to tag an extra day on and head up to one of the slopes, do some skiing uh, before we have to head to the airport? And so I was like, oh yeah, that, that sounds great, I'll, I'll, I'll join you. But what I forgot, what I didn't have the forethought to, to think of was that that day was also Valentine's Day. And uh, so my, my wife and kids were at home, and here I was out on the slopes uh, skiing and, and enjoying the, the beauty of, of Nevada and Lake Tahoe. So sometimes when my wife says that I'm romantic, there's a, a tinge of uh, sarcasm in her voice also. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to NACD's 76th annual meeting. It's such a pleasure to, to be with you. And like President Crowder, I really appreciate everyone making the commitment to be here, making the sacrifices to be here, being patient, enduring the, the things that we're having to do to, to keep everyone safe. I know it's not easy. I get super tired of wearing these things and getting the, the pieces of fuzz and fabric out of my mouth at the end of the day, but it's one of those things we have to do. It's just the environment that we're in. And I, I want to express my personal appreciation and gratitude to each of you uh, for, for everything that you're doing to, to make this event happen. This week we're considering our theme, Conservation Defined by All. Excuse me, Conservation Defined for All. When I first began thinking about our theme and my remarks, I, I struggled at first. That's a, a big theme, a big question. How do we define conservation for all? There's so many points of view, so many individual experiences with conservation. It's a, it's a big country. The, the needs are diverse, the needs are, are different in every state, every region. So it means so many different things in so many different parts of, of the country. So like with most things, I turned to Google and started looking up, looking for Webster. So I Google Webster. Whoops, went too far. There we go. First, uh, first, first uh, hit with Webster that I got was this guy. How many folks remember Webster, 1980s? Some of you maybe are too young uh, to, to remember Webster. I, I enjoyed Webster, the sitcom that was, I think it was on ABC back in the, the mid 80s. I liked the show as a kid, but that wasn't the Webster I was searching for. So I went back to, to my computer, Google Webster again. We got Daniel Webster. Daniel Webster was the American statesman and lawyer that represented New Hampshire and Massachusetts in the US Congress and was Secretary of State for Presidents Harrison, Tyler, and Fillmore. Remarkable individual in our nation's history, but that wasn't the Webster that I was seeking. So I went back to my computer, Google Webster a third time, finally found it, a hit. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary, and immediately I got to work looking for definitions to help answer how we define conservation for all. But where do I start? There are so many different terms associated with our work, and again, conservation means so many different things to so many people. So I just started at the logical place 
and looked up the word conservation. And this is what I found. Conservation, planned management of a natural resource to prevent exploitation, destruction, or neglect. Yeah, I thought that, that sounds pretty familiar. In fact, it sounded really familiar. So I went to NACD's website and compared with our current mission statement. NACD's mission is to promote responsible management and conservation of natural resources on all lands by representing locally led conservation districts and their associations through grassroots advocacy, education, and partnerships. Pretty darn close. But I wasn't sure I could just stop there. We, we've got a great mission statement. Our, our board has done a good job defining that. But there are so many other terms used in our field, so I, I had to keep going. So I went back to my computer, typed in, in Merriam-Webster. I decided to look up the definition of, sustain, of sustainable. And this is what I found. Sustainable, involving methods that do not completely use up or destroy natural resources. So I read it and reread it a few times and pondered the, the term sustainable. It, it resonates. I think we agree that we want to use methods that do not completely use up or destroy our natural resources. At the same time, sustainable takes on so many different dimensions for so many people. It's a, it's a term that I think we have, have struggled uh, to, to utilize because it's, there's so many dimensions to sustainability. For some, it means environmental sustainability. For others, it's economic sustainability. And for some, it's, it's both. So I still wasn't content, and, and I, I knew I needed to, to keep searching, so I went, went back to my computer. Next, I look, looked up the definition for one of the newest words that uh, has uh, uh, popped up in, in the conservation world, regenerative. And I found this. Regenerative, renewal or restoration of a body, bodily part, or biological system after injury or as a normal process. Renewal of a biological system after injury. That immediately made me think of the Dust Bowl and the dramatic photos of dust clouds and the severe erosion from that ecological disaster of the 1930s. I was really starting to, start to feel like I was, I was making progress now. I, I was on a roll. The Dust Bowl images made me think of another word that's been on my mind a lot lately. That word is chaos. The inherent unpredictability in the behavior of a complex natural system. And I sat with that word for a little bit. There, there was a lot in there. It, it's, it's got a lot that, that really jumped out to me. Today, it seems we deal with chaos in some form daily, and not just in our natural systems. The regular old chaos of just dealing with unpredictability in our natural systems is what we have always dealt with in conservation. But today, things are more complex than ever, and more unpredictable systems, the, the chaos of the pandemic, which has been many, the disruption to our supply chains and the availability of basic goods and services, political chaos, political unrest, international chaos, climate change, extreme weather. Some days it seems that everywhere we turn, we encounter chaos in, in some form. which led me to go back to my computer, look up another word. That word was institution. A significant practice, relationship, or organization in a society or culture. Which wasn't too far from another word. Association. 
an organization of persons having a common interest. You can, you can see where I'm going with all of this. NACD, your National Association of Conservation Districts, possesses elements of each of these definitions. We're an association of public institutions, the nation's 3,000 soil and water conservation districts, which were born out of the chaos of the Dust Bowl to renew and restore the natural systems harmed by the land management practices of that time. For over 75 years now, we have implemented plan management of natural resources to prevent exploitation, destruction, or neglect that involves methods that do not completely use up or destroy our natural resources. Pursuing our mission to promote responsible management of, and conservation of natural resources on all lands by representing locally led conservation districts and their associations through grassroots advocacy, education, and partnerships. Sounds pretty good. Delivering our programs and services like our excellent communications, our government affairs, our stewardship and education programs, and our membership services. We deliver these with our partners at NRCS, NASCA, NCDEA, and the National Association of Resource Conservation and Development Councils. Programs like our technical assistance grants, our urban agriculture conservation grants, our Friends of NACD grants, all going to support local capacity and, and technical assistance. We tirelessly work to partner on soil health, on forestry, on public lands, on invasive species, on coastal conservation, tribal outreach, and on urban and community conservation. But, all these things are good, but, our successes of yesterday are simply not sufficient to address the challenges of tomorrow. Our natural systems are inherently chaotic, constantly changing and evolving. And much as we may not like it sometimes, so is our society. We've heard a common theme in NACD's board meetings this week, that change in our world is occurring at a faster pace than ever before. And organizations that don't evolve, that don't adapt, and that aren't strategic, risk becoming obsolete. That's scary stuff. Sometimes when I need reassurance, I look to Hugh Hammond Bennett, the father of conservation, for guidance. And as our national staff can tell you, he's one of my favorite, and one of my favorite and often turned to Hugh Hammond Bennett quotes, if we are bold in our thinking, courageous in accepting new ideas, and willing to work with instead of against our land, we shall find in conservation farming an avenue to the greatest food production the world has ever known, not only for the war, but for the peace that is to follow. Big Hugh was prophetic in many ways. But we must continue to be bold in our thinking and courageous in accepting new ideas and new people. And it requires trust. It requires relationships with the people we all depend on to carry it out. The farmers, the ranchers, the forest owners, the range managers, the sportsmen, the urban agriculturalists, the landscape managers, the backyard gardeners, the land developers, the recreation managers, and all the many others who have the same love for the land that we do. That's why our work in conservation is never done. It requires our constant attention, 
our consistent and careful delivery of assistance. And it requires our commitment to local leadership. That is what defines us as an organization, and it's what defines conservation. Working with people, building trust, providing assistance, and local leadership. It's our people, it's our relationships, all of those things that, that matter. That's what defines conservation for me, and I think that's what defines conservation for our association. When we work together as one institution, as one association, I'm confident we have the people and the partnerships for conservation defined by all and conservation delivered for all. Thank you again for being in Orlando this week. Thank you for the sacrifices that you make to be with us, the sacrifices that you make back at home to serve on your local conservation districts. I hope you have a good rest of your annual meeting this week, and I look forward to meeting each of you in the hallways and in our discussions as we're together. Thank you so much.